Um, I have an excerpt here from Carl Sagan's Pale Blue Dot, the book, Go ahead. Go which ahead. is probably among the most quoted sentences of the entire book, if you allow me. I will allow Cowan- you. Okay, okay, thank you. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. And it goes on and on and on. But it, that, and that's just representatively beautiful of a very long passage. And it's a take on that pale blue dot. So, Carolyn, you wanted to reprise this. So what happened there? Yes, Pale Blue Dot happened Valentine's Day, 1990. November 13th, 1990, I get a phone call from NASA headquarters telling me I'm the imaging team leader. I'm sure those people who didn't want to pay overtime were like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so, uh, and my first team meeting, my first team meeting was, I think, early December of 1990. And that's when I told my you know, I didn't tell them we wanted, we're going to do the pale blue dot, but that's where I set my goals for the team. But anyway, so fast forward a number of years again to 20, uh, I don't know what it was, 2010, 11. And I'm starting to think, where can I find the time or in the, in the, uh, the plans for all the imagery we were going to do? Uh, where can I slot in another pale blue dot? And in doing that, trying to think of where we were going to put it, it occurred to me how great it would be if we just do the pale blue dot with a twist. And that twist was going to be that I thought, we'll invite people the world over to participate in this. We'll tell them ahead of time, not after the image is taken, like everybody else had done up until that point. We'll tell them ahead of time, at this certain time and date, we're going to take a picture of you here on the earth that the window, the picture taking window lasts 15 minutes. We want you all to go out, you know, straighten up, comb your hair, go out, <laughs> you know, and look up, you know, at the sky. Even if you're on the other side of the earth, look Wait, up. I saw Chuck in that photo. He had like, he had spinach in his teeth. <laughs> and, I, and clearly I was not wearing pants. So. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> all right. Well, Anyway, like it wasn't so clear, Chuck. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. okay, so I remember, I remember Carolyn, because there were news articles about this to get everybody to participate. People did participate. And we said, you know, just go out, look up at the sky, think of all of us here on this planet, all of Earth's creatures on one planet. Think of our isolation and the blackness of space. And think of how precious life is and our own lives are on this planet. And just smile at being alive on a pale blue dot. What's up, Star Talk fans? You know, a lot of you have reached out to me and asked, when am I doing a comedy special? Well, guess what? It's happening. That's right. This fall, I'm taping my first science comedy special here in Manhattan. So if you're going to be in the area, I want you to be there because I need the most science literate audience that I can have. And that means you. So go to ChuckNiceComic.com and use code StarTalk for your exclusive chance to make a pre-sale purchase for the tickets. It's a very limited supply of tickets so you want to do it as early as possible and that means now chucknicecomic.com use code startalk and we'll see you this fall with the rest of the star talk gang calvin porco madam saturn i got a question for you i'm told july 19th 2023 is the 10th anniversary of what it's the 10th anniversary of probably the most beautiful image of Earth ever taken, and it's called The Day the Earth Smiled. Uh, and we took Earth's picture from, uh, basically from Saturn, a solar eclipse at Saturn. Saturn was eclipsing the sun, so we got the chance to look close to the sun at the Earth without the sun impairing the picture, getting scattered light and so on. And it was special because we, uh, like no other Earth picture before we had invited 
the, uh, the people of the world to participate, told them to go out while the picture's being taken, look up, think about your position on this beautiful pale blue dot and think about how precious your life is, how, how unique our planet is for, for being the host of life in our solar system and just smile at the sheer thought of being alive. And that's what happened. Take that as a selfie, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 if uh, was Earth twerking, that would that would boost the <laughs> social social media value. If Earth was twerking during that selfie, there could have been a <laughs> lot of people twerking. We wouldn't have known it. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't so, Cal, you were head of the imaging team of Cassini that took the photo. Did did this require some convincing of NASA to get them to agree? Because the original pale blue dot. Uh, from back in Voyager, I knew had some resistance uh, because of the cost, and it wasn't in the original plan, and there's no obvious science to come of it, but it certainly has cultural value. And I think it's high time NASA recognizes its role on the cultural landscape, not just the scientific one. Uh, well, no, we didn't. We didn't ask permission for this, and I, you know, I didn't. <laughs> That's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, you know, is that only you, just coming out now, Carolyn? <laughs> you, you know, you know there are those things for which it's uh, you know it's better to beg forgiveness than ask permission, yeah. right? But yeah, when actually, yeah. actually, this happened late in the mission. We got into orbit around Saturn in 2004. This picture was taken 2013, so that was nine years after the start of the mission. People had sort of relaxed about these things, and and. More than that. Then you snuck it in when they they were relaxed, not looking. That's when no, you snuck no it one, in. No one, no one knew I was going to do it. But I, what I did was I took, I, I piggybacked on someone else's observation. There was going to be a mosaic of the entire uh, Saturn system with the, out to the rings anyway that another instrument was going to do. And I just called up the guy and said, "Look, you know, I really would have all the the footprints." that you're going to put across Saturn in its rings, please dwell a little longer and let us do RGB, red, green, blue filters. Uh, and then also when you get down near the Earth, we'd like to take some extra pictures. Uh, please do that. And so it, it happened just, it really was a slight change on a design that already had been, um, you know, had been proposed. Uh, and, and you're that being was, cleverly optimistic. I mean, I, you were being cleverly opportunistic. Opportunistic, yes, yes, yes. Well, I knew, you know, I'd been, on, I'd been at work on this mission by that time since 1990. That was a long time. I knew, I knew how to do this. Well, congratulations on that. On yes. The, uh, how are you going to celebrate the anniversary? Um, I don't know yet. I might. Uh, I don't know. I might just go out and like wave at the sky or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We had people. Yes. You know, we had people call in to uh, write to, on the website that we set up to uh, collect responses. And there were so many lovely responses from people. Uh, I remember a man in, saying that he and his daughter, 10 years old, they went out, you know, during the, the event. And they had, uh, the guy said, and yeah, I raised a glass of wine, and Phoebe, her name, raised a glass of fizzy pop. And we laughed and danced and hooted and hollered and all, you know, had a great time. So... That's a good way to celebrate. And now she's oh. 20. <laughs> well, no, now she can enjoy Yeah, that's right. Now that. she's 20. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, no, really, it's, it's, uh, I was so glad I got the opportunity to do that. It was um, something I had long wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to do it from the very beginning of being uh, selected as the imaging team leader, and I got to do the Cassini imaging team leader, and I got to do it. Now, now remind me, you started life as a rock jock, isn't that right? No, I started life as a rings person, a planetary rings person. Oh, you were, so you were planets all along. You didn't come in as a geologist. Oh, so wait a minute. Rock Jock was geologist and not like a morning DJ? Okay. Because <laughs> <No, no. laughs> I was confused. <laughs> wait, wait, so, Carolyn, wait, wait. So I, I thought you had some more overlap with the, ge with the geology folks. Well, no? I, I went to, uh, I was in the Division of Geological and Planetary Sciences at Caltech. So I got, oh, I, got learned, okay. I learned geology, I learned geophysics, I learned all that stuff. But your first love is the universe, yes. My first love is the universe. And I would encourage, like you, you tell people to go out and look up. I would say, 
If you want to have an overview effect, you don't need to go up in a Jeff Bezos spacecraft. You just go out on a dark night with no moon, look up and look at the Milky Way. And if you stare at it long enough and you kind of force yourself into this frame of mind, you can convince yourself you are looking at a disk, a gigantic disk of stars, your home galaxy. And you will know right then you're on a spaceship flying through and gazing upon this, uh, this incredible sight, which is your home. That's the overview effect. So that's what all these wonderful pictures of the Earth taken from afar do. And you can have it whenever you want. From a You're saying save your money for the seat yeah. on the Bezos flight. <laughs> don't spend your money. Don't fall don't for that. Don't spend your money. It, it's for free. You can have it for free. <laughs> have it for free. And if the you get a telescope and you look up, you, you, you might actually see Elon Musk's Tesla while you're not oh, spending no, money on, on the that way to Mars. Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I wish he was in it. <laughs> yeah, no, the aliens, because there is a, he had, does have a mannequin in it. I'm just trying to imagine aliens coming upon Earth and they first see a Tesla, right, with like a mannequin, but they don't know it's a mannequin. Maybe they think that's like a petrified mm. human, right? Well, I got to tell you, these humans are pretty damn stiff. I don't know if you want to <laughs> go there. And they're made of plastic, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go there? Uh, that is not a party know, place. After, after the Earth like just um, falls apart, we may all, we may all end up plastic. Yeah, yeah, all right. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Carol, congratulations on this anniversary, this well-deserved ten-year anniversary Thank for all you. your hard work, uh, dating back. And those interested, we have an entire Star Talk episode just featuring. Carolyn Porco's expertise. So, anyhow, again, thank you, Carolyn, for joining us. Chuck, thank you always for good having to have you, man. Always a pleasure. All right. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep looking up. 